Good morning. Good morning. Again, I want to express my appreciation for the invitation to come your way and to share this material. And my hope that these next several days will be encouraging to you and uh, helpful in your faith and present some things and uh, see some things that maybe you've not seen before. We are noting the pre Bible history which is recorded in the Bible inside the etymology of the Chinese language. And again, I, I want to have you keep in mind, and I will be stressing this over and over, these things were written in the Chinese language hundreds of years before Moses wrote Genesis. He wasn't born yet when this stuff was recorded in the Chinese language. This morning we noted about 30 characters that chronicle the details about creation. And so we're going to have a quick review. Uh, certainly not look at all of those, but at a, a selection of them. Recall this was the image for create. It's the creation of Adam. It pictures a walking, talking, living dust man. That's Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living being. Made him from the dust of the ground, of course. The image for beginning, this is one of three images for beginning in the Chinese language. It simply shows us the beginning of creation where there were two people. The image for naked, again we're going to look at some more images for naked in this hour, but this shows us two lights, the base of those lights uh, are people. And so we've got two people who are, are glorious, who are, are radiant, Presumably, this is Adam and Eve before the sin in the garden. We'll look at three more images in this hour for naked, which show them after the sin in the garden and give a reminder of the sin. This is the image for happiness. Happiness involves God and one man in the garden. This is Adam and his happiness. We'll notice another image for happiness after the sin, and uh, I believe in this lesson as well. This is the image for forbidden. God gave a command concerning two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God had forbidden them to take the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and so this is how the ancient Chinese recorded that in their language. And so in this hour, we're going to move on to the third chapter of Genesis, Adam and Eve and the sin which took place in the garden which changed the world. In Genesis 2... The chapter closes out with just Adam and Eve, two people together in the garden. We get into Genesis chapter 3 and we're introduced to somebody else who is there. Genesis 3 and verse 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. John speaks of uh, this one in Revelation 12 and verse 9 saying, So the, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. And so we're introduced now to this, uh, this devil who is there. And so notice the Chinese image for devil. Inside of this image, the ancient Chinese revealed that the devil was a secret life with man in the garden. He didn't just openly come out and reveal himself for who he is. He kept himself in secret. He is the secret life with man in the garden. He's not open and honest. He hides things. He's deceitful. But further to that, consider the image for tempter. We take that character for devil and we put a cover and two trees with it and we have the tempter. Literally, it's picturing the first temptation. How Satan covered up the truth about the two trees. God said they would die if they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan lied to them and told them, no, 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 God, God's not telling you the truth on that. He covered up the truth. And so he deceived Eve, suggesting that God was holding something back from them and that they deserved the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But he made no mention of the cost, that they wouldn't be able to take of the tree of life anymore, that they would die. Uh, and so he is the tempter. He's the one who covered up the truth about the two trees. In verses 4 and 5, 
We read, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. In James chapter 1 and at verse 13, James tells us that temptation plays on our desires. And that's exactly what the devil is doing here. He's playing on the desires of the woman. He's manipulating her. And so when the Chinese people wrote the, the word for desire, this is the, the word that they put, and it, it talks about this woman being provoked to, with desire for the fruit from the tree. What the image shows us, again, is the two trees and the woman. She had access to the tree of life already. He is provoking her and, and, and creating desire in her to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so in verse 6 in the Genesis account, we're told, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he <coughs> ate. And so she had, he has caused her to desire to covet the tree, and she eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We saw this image in our last lesson. This is the beginning of creation. Remember, it pictures two people. Now I want you to consider a different image for beginning. And again, these can be used interchangeably uh, in common conversation in the Chinese language, but the etymology is very different. This is the beginning of sin. What it shows us is the woman secretly took something into her mouth. She took of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she ate of it, and, and of course afterwards she gave to her husband. Have you ever wondered, was Adam right there when she ate the fruit or not? The, the Genesis account doesn't directly tell us. Uh, I, I think that we can uh, perhaps presume something from the way that the account is written, but the Chinese people make it very clear she did this in secret. And we're going to see something else later on that tells us about her leaving the authority of her husband in order to do so. But she secretly took of this uh, and then, of course, gave to her husband after her. Adam comes to her or she comes to Adam, whatever it be, he eats of the fruit as well. We saw this image in our first lesson, which tells us about Adam and Eve being naked. Again, these are two glorious people. They've got, they're radiant in, in the way that they're presented. This is Genesis 2.25 being written out for us. They were naked and were not ashamed. But no longer is that their state. Now they have sinned and now they know that they are naked. And so we've got three more images in the Chinese language that picture for us uh, this image of being naked. In these three images, and, and most Chinese images will have a left side and a right side. Some of them are top and bottom, but most of them are left and right. And so the left side of each of these images, the first one is man, the second one is body, the third one is clothing. Uh, I want us to focus on the third one of these images. That's what we're, what we're going to look at. So Genesis 3 and verse 7 tells us, The eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. They understood, we need to cover up. We don't want to be naked like this. And, and so they made coverings from the fig leaves. Well, this image that we have for clothing literally tells us that they had covered up two people. When you got dressed this morning, was that a two-person activity or a one-person activity? Usually when we get dressed, it, we do that ourselves, we, unless we're dressing a small child. But the image inside of this word for naked, this image for, for clothing is to cover up Two people. And I want you to see where the second person is. The second person is coming out of the side of the first. That's Adam and Eve. Remember back in chapter 1, we were told that God opened up Adam's side and he took a rib and he closed up the flesh in his place and from that rib he made woman. And so this is Adam and Eve being pictured for us. These first two people who now know that they're naked. <coughs> The right side of the image, I said there was a reminder in this of the sin that took place. The right side of the image is the character for fruit. Fruit. Here they are, they're covering themselves up because they know that they're naked. How do they know that they're naked? Because they ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What God told them they should not do. 
Now, the image for fruit is the garden tree. Now, a skeptic will say, well, of course it is. It's from a tree in a garden, big deal. Most fruit comes from trees that are in gardens. And I agree, big deal if that's all that there is in this, but consider the complexity of the image we're looking at. It's an image that means naked and pictures clothing and fruit. What do those have to do with naked? Apart from Genesis chapter 3. And not only that, the word for clothing pictures not one but two people being covered up. And the reason Adam and Eve knew they were naked is because they'd eaten from the fruit that was on the tree in the Garden of Eden. And so it's not just, oh, it's the garden tree, that's where fruit came. The, the complexity of this image indicates that it is about Adam and Eve. There's, there's no other valid explanation that would combine all of those facts together. Except Genesis 3 in the Garden of Eden. As the Genesis narrative continues, we find that the Lord came to the garden and they hid themselves. <coughs> Genesis chapter 3 and at verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. They'd sinned, and so they, they, they wanted to flee from the presence of God. Here is a Chinese word for hide, and what it reveals is body among several trees. They might have liked to have hide behind a building, but there were no buildings to hide behind. All they had was trees. And so they hid behind some trees. Where else is there to hide? There's an ultimate rendering of this same image, and it literally means body is tree. If you've played hide and seek, you know that you can't be moving around a whole lot. You're going to be found pretty easy. So this image tells us how still they were, how terrified they were when God came through the garden. They weren't going to move whatsoever. I don't think God carried on the conversation with them that follows in chapter 3, with them hiding behind a pair of trees or, or in the trees. I think He called them to come forth from the trees. And so here is the Chinese image for come. And what this image shows, you're, you've seen these already a few times, that's a tree and we've got two people behind the tree. And God's calling them to come from the tree. Again, I said in Lesson 1, there are a number of two-person images that seem to make sense only in the context of Adam and Eve. Because when you call somebody to come, you don't call two people. Might be one person, might be 20 people, whatever it be. But why two people? Adam and Eve were the two people behind the trees. They're the ones who were hiding. In the next several verses in the Genesis account, God pronounces the consequences of sin. Genesis 3 and at verse 16, talking to the woman, He says, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. The woman is going to experience pain. Here is a Chinese image for pain. Now the Bible gives us the details of where and when the pain is going to come in bearing children. What the Chinese character does is it reminds us of why she would experience the pain. And so again, if you look at the etymology of it, the top portion you're familiar with, that's the two trees. The bottom portion means under man. And so we've got the two trees reference. We know it, tree of life, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the two special trees in the Garden of Eden. But what's this under man reference? She ate the fruit because she stepped out from under her husband's authority. She was supposed to be under man. She was created as a helper to him, a companion for him, but under his authority. And yet she stepped out of that. In Genesis 3 verse 16, again, notice the latter part of the verse your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. I don't think Genesis 3.16 is a punishment. The first portion is, in pain you shall bring forth children. The latter part is not a punishment. That's a reminder of what she is, where she's supposed to be. She's to be subject to her husband. And so the Chinese people, they recorded that in the image itself. She's to be under her husband. And so she experienced pain because she stepped out from under her husband's authority. 
In verse 17 and 18, God now directs His attention to Adam. He says to Adam, Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. So for Adam, he's going to have toil and hardship. Here is an image for sorrow and hardship. He's going to struggle to work the ground. It's not going to be as easy as it was in the Garden of Eden. We read earlier in chapter 2, God placed man in the garden so he might tend it and keep it. And I don't think that that was a difficult job for him. It was a job, but I don't think it was exceptionally difficult. But after this, there's going to be thorns and thistles. It's going to get very difficult. This image for sorrow or hardship literally pictures ancient weeds. That was what he's going to have to deal with. These ancient weeds that are going to grow now. And the word for ancient in this text pictures man feeding himself from among the ancient weeds. It's the number ten and a mouth. Well, what do we have ten of? Ten fingers. This is him pitching, uh, picturing uh, him feeding himself from among the weeds. The ancient weeds, you put it all together, you have his sorrow or his hardship. In verse 18, it says, Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Thorns and thistles. The Chinese have a few images for thorns. Here's one of them. And uh, the thorns is the, the weed's punishment. That's exactly what Adam was going to endure, was the weeds punishment. Uh, these thorns that, that would come. Again, that makes sense when we look at Genesis 3. But notice the word punishment. We can actually break the word punishment down a little bit further. And what it shows is two offenders and a knife. Of course, a knife being a tool of punishment. But there wasn't one offender who was going to have to deal with this. There were actually two of them that are being put out and having to deal with this, both Adam and Eve. And so the, the word thorns itself pictures what God said to Adam in Genesis chapter 3 and them having to leave and deal with the weeds curse that would be upon the earth. Chapter 3 and verse 19. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Now, there are several reasons why somebody might sweat. You might go to the sauna and work up a sweat in the sauna. You might go and play soccer. You might be involved in construction, whatever it be. There's a number of ways to work up sweat. This image among the Chinese people for sweat pictures Adam and his sweat. Well, what we show in this is an offender having water coming off of him, that's the sweat, who was sent out or, or, or caused to go out. In Canada, we don't send our offenders out. We actually lock them up. I think you all do the same kind of thing around here. Where in the world do they send their offenders out? Well, in the Garden of Eden, God sent the offenders out. They could not stay there. And so God sent them out of the garden, and, and they wouldn't be allowed to remain there. Adam was the offender who was sent out. Now, not only is he going to sweat, but he's also going to die. Remember, that was what God said, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so here is the Chinese image for die, one of them. There's a few of them that, that they use. Um, but both Adam and Eve are going to die because they both ate of the fruit. And so this image shows these two perfect people. Remember, we had an image the, 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 for perfection that showed two people, Adam and Eve, now we've got these two perfect people, but their perfection has been covered because of their sin. No longer perfect. The perfect people now are going to die because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh, in disobedience to God. In lesson one, we saw the image for glory. This is two radiant people, two perfect people who have some kind of association with a tree. Presumably it's the tree of life. They have eaten the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil contrary to the will of God and so now these two glorious people are headed to the grave. Notice the upper part of the image. Everything up here is the same but still these two radiant people and there's still a cover or, or an association with something. No longer is in the tree. Now it's the earth or dust. They're going to go back to dust again. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken, so he drove the man out. Here is the image for expel or to drive out. It shows an offender. Again, most offenders get locked up. This one's being driven out. He's sent away. That very day, he's going to have to go, to leave, to travel. But the image for go or travel actually pictures two people who were made of dust. That's the reference to Adam and Eve and how they were made. They were those that were made of dust. But notice where the second person is, coming out of the side of the first. Again, God opened up Adam's side, took a rib from his side, closed up the flesh in its place. That's a reference to Eve. We've seen two images for the word beginning thus far. We've got the beginning of creation. That simply pictures two people. We've seen the beginning of sin. That's the woman secretly taking something into her mouth. Here is a third image for beginning. And this is the beginning of atonement. What it combines together are the words for clothing and a knife. Genesis 3 and at verse 21. It says, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. God supplied clothing for Adam and Eve as they were leaving the garden. Now, this text is often used to discuss modesty. And I don't know how modest or immodest they clothed themselves with the fig leaves. And if they were clothed immodestly with the fig leaves and, and all they needed was a few more fig leaves... God might have told them, put on a few more fig leaves. But that's not what He did. <coughs> this isn't just modesty that we're talking about. This is atonement that we're talking about. What God did is He took two animals, and those animals had to die. That's why the knife is in this. There are two animals who had to die. And it wasn't just because Adam and Eve needed fur coats. This is about atonement. This is sacrifice taking place. And so we've got three images for beginning. The beginning of creation, the beginning of sin, and the beginning of atonement. As I said earlier, you can use these interchangeably in Chinese. As you're writing, it doesn't matter which one you use. They all mean beginning. But in their etymology, they are very different. We noted this image for garden in our first lesson. Pictures Adam and Eve, these two people who are made of dust, who have in them the breath of life, and they're inside the enclosure. Now they are no longer in the garden, but rather they are far or distant. Notice everything that's inside the image. We've got everything from inside this image on top of this one, but that doesn't mean enclosure. That means they're walking. They have been sent out of the garden. They're now walking. That's exactly what the Genesis account tells us. Again, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. The Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. They are now far or distant from the garden which they had been placed in. They would no longer enjoy the kind of fellowship that they once had with God in the garden. In fact, now we might say that they would be alone in the world. They're, they don't have the same closeness to God that they had because sin has gotten the way. What's intriguing to me about this image for alone is it actually pictures two people. <coughs> Top portion, that's two people. You ever been alone together? That, that's really what it is. Two people inside the image of alone, but the lower portion of, of it tells us that they're outside of the perfect garden. Again, God sent him out of the garden. They're both set away from the garden. They don't have that closeness that they had once. They must have felt pretty alone compared to how things were in the garden. 
After sending them out, God protected the way to the tree of life with an angel who had a sword. Genesis 3, verse 23 and 24, He drove the man out and He placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden. And a flaming sword was turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Here is an image for a double-edged sword among the Chinese. What it tells us or combines together are the words for all or whole and a knife. Now the knife makes sense. It's a, it's a sword that this angel has. And so it's a knife of sorts. But what about the word all or whole? Why is that there? Well, we saw in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 in our first lesson that this is associated with Adam and Eve that it combines the words life and destiny being wrapped up in these two people, in Adam and Eve. All of humanity's destiny was wrapped up in these two. And further yet, the image for together that was in here, it pictures one man, but it's, it's Adam and Eve together, Genesis chapter uh, 2 and verse 24, them being one flesh. It'd be really neat if there was a flame in there that we would know for sure that this is the flaming sword, but everything else in the image is saying that all of humanity is being kept from something by this double-edged sword. This image is for guard, to defend, to protect. That's what this angel is there for. The angel is there as a guard. Inside this image... What he's guarding is to keep that one man or that man from the opening to the tree. You know, we get guards for a number of different things. We'll set guards at prisons, military bases, you know, public figures have guards, all kinds of guards in the world. How many guards have you seen that are standing guard in front of a tree? Because that's where this guard is. Protecting the tree or the opening, the entrance to the tree from man. That's keeping Adam and Eve away from the garden of Eden, from the tree of life. Can I suggest to you that we're likely beyond coincidence? We've looked at the first three chapters of Genesis, and we've looked at approximately 55 characters. And they show us precise detail of the things that are happening inside the Genesis account. And again, is it a favorable interpretation? I believe it is. But the more evidence that we amass together, again, we're headed towards the number 100. That's where we're headed. We're looking at approximately 100 images that all tell us the pre babel history. And so I believe there is a link between the Chinese language, the writing of the ancient Chinese, and what we find here in the Genesis account. In our next lesson, this afternoon at 2.30, is that correct? We're going to look at Cain and Abel, chapter 4, and then we're going to move on and talk about Noah and his contemporaries. We're not going to talk about the ark yet. The ark and the flood, Lord willing, will be tomorrow evening. But we're going to notice some more things about Cain and Abel and, and some more images dealing with sacrifice and the need for sacrifice and, uh, and how the Chinese have presented that uh, within the etymology of their language. <coughs> this material really doesn't uh, lead towards a, a standard invitation of sorts, but I want to extend a, an invitation for obedience to the gospel if there are any here who need to do so. Uh, I don't know you, and so I don't know who is a Christian and who is not a Christian. But I do know that God expects us to be obedient to His will, and if we want the hope of heaven, we need to become His children. So what we find in Scripture is the, the need for us to respond in faith, repenting of our sin, being baptized for the remission of our sin. So if you are here with us today, and you have an interest in spiritual things, and being here says that you do have an interest in spiritual things, but if you have not obeyed the gospel message, then you need to, you need to do so. Lord willing, we're coming back this afternoon at 2.30, but that's subject to God. That's subject to Him giving us life and breath until that time, and, and the Lord not coming before that time. <laughs> so there's no time to be ready for the Lord except right now. So if you are not ready to meet the Lord, won't you respond in faith and obedience to God's message?
you're subject to the invitation, let us know as we stand together.